Welcome to TCU Football with head football coach Jim Wacker. Today's show is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of North Texas. Coca-Cola Classic. You can't beat the feeling. Radio Shack, the technology store, America's leader in consumer electronics. Blackman Mooring Stomatic, carpet, furniture, drapery, and air duct cleaning. Delta Airlines, Delta, we love to fly and it shows. Dr. Pepper Bottling Company of Texas, Dr. Pepper and TCU, just what the doctor ordered. Jack Williams Auto Mall, Highway 80 at Loop 820 and West Fort Worth. Ashworth Insurance, for your peace of mind, we're always there. TCU would also like to thank the following sponsors for their support. Max Eubank Roofing, Bruce Alford, Union Pacific Resources, Curtis Nooner, and Southwest Land Title. Last week, we were calling it unbelievable. This week, I guess we can just say unpredictable. The Horn Frogs come to Waco, Texas, and lose as the Baylor Bears finish up this football game with a 27-9 victory over the TCU Horn Frogs. Wishbone backfield, Palmer, the up back, could be the play of the game. Fumbled, and it won't matter as Baylor falls on the football because TCU is short of the end zone. It wouldn't have mattered who picked the ball up. The ball was fumbled, and Bader got the ball at the one-yard line, and TCU blows a golden opportunity here. They had second and goal at the one-yard line and couldn't punch it in. If that play wasn't typical for the whole ugly, stupid day, we made more crazy mistakes. Hey, we played hard at times. We played good at times. Defense in particular really dominated. But hey, you cannot make those kind of crazy errors. Here the quarterback at fourth and one, down on the goal line. We've got a chance to go ahead, seven to three. And what happens as the quarterback pulls out from behind the center, our guard who is zone blocking knocks the football out of his hand. We fumble. Then what happens, huh? The ball bounces around. We recover. Brett Alexander definitely comes up with it in the end zone. But for some reason, it was blown dead before anybody had control. I can't understand that. I really think it should have been a touchdown. But the officials didn't see it that way, and they're right, and Wacker's wrong, and that's the way life is in a big city. You can't cry about it. Life goes on. We had our chance. Boy, did we have our chance. Nearly <laughs> twice as many first downs. Defense plays a great game. Holds them to 12 first downs and 231 yards total offense. Now, that's against a good Baylor football team. We have twice as much passing yardage. We have more rushing yardage. We have 135 yards total offense, more than Baylor does. And we get blown out on the scoreboard. Why? I'll tell you why. Five interceptions, two run back for touchdowns. We couldn't protect the passer all day. Their front four totally dominated our offensive line. They did it with a four-man rush, and that should never happen. We've got to line up and do a lot better job of competing than we did on Saturday if we want to win football games. Most of those were not quarterback mistakes. They were the offensive line simply flat getting whipped, getting beaten. And it happened time after time. Grant Taft and his staff have an awful lot to be proud of, that rush that they got out of that defensive front. Because they played a lot better than we did than our offense did. But hey, turn the coin over, our defense also dominated Baylor all day for the entire ball game. We made a few more mistakes, and that was the difference in the ball game. To you stunning up front. Baylor throws the pass. It's intercepted by Crump at the 35. Crump down to the 30 and tackled there. TCU forces the first big break of the afternoon. And now here's TCU at their own 49. They need to gain the Baylor 21. Play drops back, lofting it downfield for Shipley, who makes the catch at the 19-yard line. No. What do they say here? They say intercepted. Mike Welch took the football away from him. My goodness, that was close. They have to punt it away for the second time in the game. And they snap it short. This is TCU on the fake, and they miss it. They don't get there. The short snap to TCU Scott McKinnon. It'll be a 19-yard field goal try by sophomore Jeff Ireland from Abilene. Far hash mark. The snap and hold are good, and the kick's on the way, and it is good. So Baylor takes the early lead here with 2.45 to go in the first quarter. Bears three, Horn Frogs nothing. Wishbone backfield, Palmer the up back, could be the play of the game. Fumbled, and 
it won't matter as Baylor falls on the football because TCU is short of the end zone. It wouldn't have mattered who picked the ball up. The ball was fumbled, and Baylor got the ball at the one-yard line, and TCU blows a golden opportunity here. They had second and goal at the one-yard line and couldn't punch it in. 4-3 defensive look for TCU. Here's Lincoln Coleman. Coleman loses the football at the 30. TCU's Lavoie Crump dives and has it, and TCU gets the football back. Frogs marching in Grant Taft's into the field here on first and 10 from the 47. Play action fake. Clay over the middle, threw it right to Ron Francis at the 43. Francis on his feet, moving the football back into TCU territory at the 47. And it's first down at the 24-yard line. No huddle offense. Two receivers right. Clay looks that way and throws it right to a TCU, a Baylor defender, and he'll score a touchdown. Malcolm Frank steps in front of Shipley and waltzes into the end zone. Touchdown, Baylor. Fourth down and less than a yard at the 40-yard line. They fumble the snap again, and Baylor will take over at the 41-yard line. Giles sends three receivers left and calls him set at the far hash mark, 45-yard line. He fakes the uh, handoff and now rolls out. Now in trouble. Dumps it, and it's caught by James Francis. Intercepted down the left sideline. There he goes. Down to the 10, the 5, touchdown. Baylor returns their second intercepted pass for a score this afternoon. And turn out the lights. The party is over in Waco, Texas. Third week in a row, our defensive staff has come up with a great defensive game plan. And boy, our kids on defense, have they played? Have they ever competed? And they did it again Saturday against the Baylor Bears at their homecoming. We played good enough on defense to win that football game. I'll promise you that. To hold them to 12 first downs again, that's incredible. And man, a lot of guys play. The Boyle Crump again, another interception. Uh, recovers a fumble. Tackles all over the football field. What about those freshmen, Reggie Campbell, Brad Smith? Man, they played their best games ever as Horned Frogs. We had a lot of guys. Fred Washington back in the lineup. Does he ever make a difference? And again, Buddy White. You can go right on down the line. We had a lot of guys. Roosevelt Collins, one of his best games ever. Frogs, 4-3 defensive look here. On first and five, they hand it off to Rafael, turns the corner, but no, can't get it past Brad Smith back at the 24-yard line. TCU stunning up front. Bader throws the pass. It's intercepted by Crump at the 35. Crump down to the 30 and tackled there. TCU forces the first big break of the afternoon. Bobby Jack Goforth coming off a serious knee injury, a split left, and they hand it off to Rafael. In jail, in big trouble back at the 31-yard line. He loses three. First and 10 from the Horn Frog 29-yard line. Close to the near hash mark. Hand off Rafael coming this way and hit in the backfield. Boy, the TCU rush defense led by Smith, Collins, and Fred Washington are there to lock him up for a loss of a yard and a half. Last year, they sacked Gable six times, intercepted him five times, and it's first and goal as Bader tries to take the early lead. Handoff, Rafael coming left, hit as he gains maybe a yard near sideline, driven out by Reggie Campbell and Robert McWright from their own one-yard line. The Bader's in an offset eye formation here out of their own end zone. They hand it off to Lincoln Coleman for maybe a yard right over the center, Scott McCool. Give him a gain of one, call it second and nine from the two, and a quarterback sneak from Gable gets him another yard and a half and he's still inside the five facing a third down and about seven. Looks like a running play here as they send Murray in motion on third down and one and pitch it left to Coleman on the sweep. Smith makes a tackle back at the 29 yard line. Coleman dives to the 31 but short of the first down and the freshman from Houston is playing his best game as a TCU Horn Frog right now. Great individual effort by Brad Smith. Gable nursing an injury to his right arm and Ed Lovell is the man behind center hands off to Raphael Eldman Raphael is tackled at the 45 yard line after a gain of one second and 10 from the 12 yard line one setback Lovell three-step drop in trouble now still in trouble and finally sacked by Rosie Collins at the five yard line setback split right one man out there and a lone setback Lincoln Coleman Coleman with a handoff check that Elvin Raphael for two yards at right tackle he is uh, hit first by Brad Smith and locked up down there by Jason Cobble Stephen Shipman Stu Dick Mike Houston Michael Jackson Mike Noah hey all of those have one thing in common they're all freshman receivers and boy are they ever playing this year for the Horned Frog you realize that 70 percent of our passes have been caught by freshmen this year 75% of the passing yardage
has come at the hands of freshman receivers. Now that's an incredible statistic. to the secondary college that's a big step coming up from uh from high school is getting used to the secondary and uh you got to read the coverages here and uh you know you gotta uh, you're gonna have to adjust your routes in different places like in high school you had a set route to run and here uh, you just have to read the coverages and get open under 11 minutes to go at the air force 24 play looks right now throws it downfield for shifley goes up and caught the football touchdown tcu 24-yard touchdown pass for the freshman from Lindale. And TCU's Steve Shipley makes it a 26-3 football game. Yeah, my first couple years in high school, I played uh, slot back. And then the last few years, I went to running back, so I didn't, I didn't catch a whole lot of balls. So I had to kind of get back, get used to catching the ball again and running routes and being in the pattern. First and 10 at the Eagles, 33-yard line. Fake to Monkins, Giles over the middle, wide open, touchdown, Cedric Dickens from 33 yards out. And Cedric Dickens, the freshman from Quanta, has his first college touchdown. The big difference is uh, being able to read defenses and adjustments. And in high school, you just you have your set pattern, you go with it. You know, here we got to look at all the blitzes and all the, and the coverage just change as the play goes. And, uh, you know, it's just a lot, of, lot more stuff to watch. Um, it's just, just you just got to do a lot of practicing and learn everything. And, uh, but the catching is still the same. I mean, the ball comes a little bit faster, but uh, you know, you get used to that. TCU trying to get one of their own here. Second down and goal. Giles fakes, rolls out, touchdown. Mike Nowak wide open, five yards deep in the end zone. His first college touchdown. The redshirt freshman from Duncanville puts TCU back in control. It just, we have a young team, and we, we just got to grow up fast. That's what we keep uh, telling ourselves out there. You know, we're out there on the field. We're young, but we can't go out there thinking we're young. You just got to go out there and keep believing in yourself and know that you can do it no matter if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior. So. bad decision should have waited another week but hey what about his replacement another freshman leon clay he comes in and boy does he do a great job for us time after time the one problem we have is it's hard for a quarterback to throw from his back and that's the one thing we've got to make some improvements there we've got to give him more time we've got to give him better protection if we do that leon clay is going to put the lights out because he is a fine young quarterback and we can block and we can protect him a lot better than we did saturday that was the key to the ball game what about that other freshman, huh? Curtis Motkins, again, our leading rusher. Hey, we do have some young guys playing awfully, awfully well. Mike Bulla from Colleen, near here. Bends over center, snaps to Clay, who dumps it out to Palmer. Caught at the 27, out past the 30, near the 35, knocked out, flag down. First down, TCU pending the outcome of the flag, which is laying at the 28-yard line. They face second and nine with a minute 45 to go in the first quarter. Clay under pressure as he delivers over the middle, and Blackwell goes up at the 50 to get the football first down, TCU. Two first downs on this drive, which started at the 20. Clay fakes the handoff to Palmer, rolling left over the head of Blackwell, but right to Dickens at the 38-yard line. Blackwell was the intended receiver. It went over his head, and Dickens was diving for it. Shipley and Dickens split left. One set back. They fake it that way. Clay, still a lot of time. Now delivers the football down the near sideline, and Shipley goes up 
at the 25 and makes the catch down to the 10 he goes before he is tackled by Mike Welch and there is 6'4", 204 pound Stephen Shipley doing it like he did last week. Long count, Clay may be calling an audible here as he shifts Palmer into a slot left. Now Clay dropping back five over the middle caught by Palmer at the one yard line just short of the end zone. TCU's Tommy Palmer with a nice catch but an excellent throw by Leon Clay under pressure, saving tackle by Frankie Smith. Long count here for Leon Clay against the 4-3. He wants to throw the football. They let the rush come, dump it over the middle to Jackson, caught at the 38, gain of seven. Shipley split widest to the left side, and Palmer goes in motion right. No one in the backfield for Clay on second and six. Under pressure, dumps it over the middle. Jackson caught near another first down at the Baylor 47. Two and a half to go here in the second quarter. Frogs, one set back, and Clay to throw from his own one-yard line, dumps it out and has Shipley out first down at the 23, cutting over the middle. Shipley with those sure hands and long arms just cradle that football for a gain of 13, maybe 14 yards. Leon Clay making his first start at quarterback. It's one thing to come off the bench cold. It's quite another to think about it all week and come out and execute from the get-go. And here's Motkins coming left, turns the corner and gets the ball out near the 20-yard line as he ducked under. The outstretched arms of Robert Blackman and is very close to a first down. And now it becomes third and four as they send Dickens wide right, Shipley wide left, and Jackson goes in motion. Hopkins the lone setback. Clay fakes the handoff and rolls left. Gets past Francis. Now he tucks it and runs to the 25, 24, 23. Still on his feet to the 20-yard line. Two receivers left on second and 10. They fake to Motkins, near side again. Fire it to Jackson, caught at the eight yard line and he falls forward to the six. Three receivers split left, far hash mark, blitz coming. Giles dumps it out to Blackwell at the 45, down to the 40, very close to a first down as he is tripped up down there oh, no. by Baylor's Frankie Smith. Play on first down in trouble, scrambles at the 20, out to the 25, will tuck it and run, 35. Out to the 40-yard line, still on his feet, toward the middle of the field, and finally captured at the 43-yard line. Frog spoiled homecoming here two years ago with a 24-0 win. Draw play. Motkins, Motkins in the open field, out to midfield, into Baylor territory at the 45. Play out of his own end zone. Looking, fires it out to the 20-yard line, and Steve Shipley caught and dropped at the 23. Second and 13 from the 20. Play action fake. Clay looking near sideline. Wide open. Holmes at the 35, 37 yard line and swarmed over at that point. Second and 18. The only question now will TCU be able to score a touchdown? Draw play. Motkins out to the 35, 40. Near the 45 yard line. Quick 15 by Curtis Motkins and a flag flies. TCU has it first and 10 at their own 39. Far hash mark. Leon Clay to throw. Short drop. Diving. Stephen Shipley in Baylor territory with a nice catch at the 46-yard line. Redshirt freshman from Tyler, Texas, seeing his first action as a Horn Frog at center. He snaps to Clay, who hands to Motkins, and Motkins down inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. We have less than five minutes to go, third and eight, Clay to throw. He is under pressure, dumps it out to Kelly Blackwell, caught at the 20, still on his feet at the 10, down to the five. He will score the touchdown! Kelly Blackwell scores his first college touchdown, and TCU is on the board. Okay, so we blew a golden opportunity with the Baylor Bears. But this week, the last home game, the last game for all of these seniors that have done so much for this football program. Hey, who do we get to play? None other than the Houston Cougars. Man alive, does Jack Pardee have those guys throwing and catching the football. Again, they're setting every record there is. Yeah, they're coming off a tough loss to uh, the University of Arkansas. But, hey, don't let that one mislead you. They play great defense all year long, and they are the most explosive passing team in the history of college football. Andre Ware, he's in the running for the Heisman Trophy. Man, alive. And he's mobile. He can run, but does he throw the football? They've got a great offensive line. they got receivers that won't quit. Hey. You're going to see a great football game because the Horned Frogs are going to be ready. We're going to play better than we did against Baylor. That is a promise. We're excited about our last home game. We hope you're there Saturday, Eamon Carter Stadium.